So let's practice pra practice writing chemical equations. We're going to write uh, the symbols for everything. We're going to write out a full equation, and then we're going to go ahead and balance them all. So lots of practice here. All right, some things you need to keep in mind. One, you need to remember diatonics. You need to worry about hydrogen. It hangs out in pairs. Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and then we go down chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Those guys all are diatomic. They hang out in pairs. They don't like to be by themselves. So if they're not bonded to a different element, they have to be N2, O2, F2, whatever. Even if it doesn't say gas, it could say oxygen or it could say oxygen gas. Either way, it's still diatomic. Oxygen's not happy sitting there with six little valence electrons when there's other oxygens around it also in the same boat. So instead, it'll end up bonding and forming and making a double bond and hanging out in pairs. Hydrogen will make a single bond, nitrogen will make a triple bond, and then fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they'll all make single bonds, but they'll all hang out in pairs to be satisfied. Other things you need to remember, ionic, if you see a polyatomic ion or if you see a metal, you're gonna be dealing with charges. You have to consider charges. You can't always assume it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You also need to know your polyatomics. Um, and finally, if you see prefixes, it's covalent, so you don't have to worry about the charges. All right, so here we go. Ammonium. Ammonium was one of those guys that you had to remember. It's NH4, the little plus one charge. And nitrate is not just nitrogen, it's nitrate, NO3, with a negative one. Now, because it's positive and negative, they're both ones, they cancel each other out, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Decomposes explosively to form. That's a big fancy way of saying makes. Okay, makes nitrogen. Sorry, N2 plus oxygen. Oxygen's diatomic and water vapor, H2O. Okay, so then we go back and we try to balance it. So, let me pick a different color here. We've got one, two nitrogens, two nitrogens. We've got four hydrogens. Over here we want to have four hydrogens, so I put a two in front. And then we've got three oxygens. We've got one, two, three, four. So that's a problem. So we're going to have to double this. Now we have six oxygens, and we'll worry about our oxygens in a minute. But let's see what else that affected. Now we have two, four nitrogens. So we put a two there. So now we have four nitrogens. We have two times H4. That's H8. So we've got eight of these. So we're going to change that to a four. So now there's eight hydrogens. And then let's see what happens to our oxygens. 2 times 3 is 6 oxygen. Over here we have 2 plus 4. That's 6. So now we're all set. A 2, a 2, a 1, imaginary 1, and a 4. 2, 2, 1, 4. All right, let's look at the next one. Dinitrogen. So right away I see prefixes. I love when I see prefixes because I don't have to think. I just write N2. Tetrahydride. That's hydrogen with a 4. Dinitrogen tetrahydride reacts with, that's a fancy way of saying plus, reacts with oxygen, diatomic, to produce, here's my arrow, nitrogen, diatomic, and water, plus H2O. So there's my sentence turned into chemical equations, and now let's go ahead and try to balance this. Two nitrogens, two nitrogens, four hydrogens, let's put a two in front, now I got four hydrogens, two oxygens, Two gets distributed to oxygen. So we're all set. It's all balanced. All we had to do is change um, the two out in front of the water. Next up, lead two. Now that charge, or that two, is a charge on lead. It's not how many are in the formula. Lead makes a plus two in this instance. Nitrate is NO3 with a negative one. So you're going to write out Pb and then NO3 two. The two from the lead goes after the nitrate. It does not go after the lead. <laughs> All right, reacts with, fancy way of saying plus. Sodium iodide. Sodium's a metal, so I have to think about charges. Iodine's negative one, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. NaI. To create, there's my arrow. Lead to iodide. Lead's making a plus two. Iodide's negative one, so I crisscross them. Pb, imaginary one, I2, and... Sodium nitrate. Sodium is plus one. Nitrate is negative one, so it's NaNO3. So there's my equation, and then I want to balance it. One lead, 
one lead, two nitrates, two nitrates, two sodiums, two sodiums, distribute two iodines, two iodines. So one, two, one, two. All right, next up, phosphorus. So just plain old P. And it's not P2, it's not diatomic, it's just plain P. Reacts with plus oxygen gas, O2, moving battery power here, oxygen gas to produce, big fancy way of saying yield, diphosphorus, again I'm happy with those prefixes because I don't have to think, pentoxide, O5. So then I balance it, I know I start with two phosphoruses, and then I've got O2 and O5, so that can't happen, you can't start with five and poof, magically end up with, or start with two and magically end up with five. So we're going to make this an equal 10, 10 on either side. By putting a two there, I impacted my phosphorus, so that's four phosphorus. So four, five, two. Okay, next one. We're going to deal with calcium. So calcium comes in contact with, fancy way of saying plus, water. And then it says calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas is produced. So calcium hydroxide, calcium's plus two, hydroxide's OH with a negative one. That's where you gotta know your polyatomics. So calcium is gonna get the one from the hydroxide, and then hydroxide is gonna have to go in parentheses because we want two sets of them. And hydrogen gas, that's diatomic. So there's our basic equation, and now we have to go balance it. One calcium, one calcium, that's good. Two hydrogens. Watch this. There's two there and there's two there. So we have to change that to a two. And then that gets distributed. There's two O's and two distributed is two O's. So now it's all balanced. We're good to go. All right. A couple more here. The next one. When hexane, and I give you the formula, C6H14 reacts with plus O2, a combustion reaction occurs. This reaction produces CO2 and water. Okay, so there's your basic equation. And then go ahead and balance it. We got six carbons. We want six carbons here. We got 14 hydrogens, so we put a seven. Seven times two is 14. And then we look at our oxygens. No matter what we put here is always going to be even. And then we do six times two is 12. That's even, that's good. But then seven times one is odd. So whenever you have an even and an odd, you always double your odd. So this one's making it odd. I'm going to double 7, and I'm going to turn it into 14. So let me just change the ink here. I'm going to make this a 14. So now when I make that 14, I end up with a lot more hydrogens than I started with. 14 times 2. So over here, I'm going to do 14 times 2. Basically, I'm doubling my imaginary 1. But now, 2 times 6 is 12 carbons. I don't want just 6 here. I want 12. And then I look at my oxygens. This is still going to be even, but now 12 times 2 is 24. 14 times 1 is 14. 12 plus 14, or I'm sorry, 24 plus 14 is 38. That's even. That's good because now I can cut it in half and put 19 right here. So 2, 19, 12, and 14. This is a perfect example of do oxygens last, and when you find out you have something odd on one side, and even on the other, double the odd. All right, next one. We got sodium hydroxide. So sodium's plus one. Hydroxide's OH negative one. They can hook up on a one-to-one -one ratio. NaOH reacts with plus iron three nitrate. Fe and then nitrate is NO3. And iron is a plus three charge. Nitrate's negative one. So the three goes after the nitrate. The one's going to go after the iron. So it's going to be Fe and then NO3, 3. To create, that's, I'm sorry, that's my arrow, to create. A precipitate, that means it's going to be a solid substance that's going to settle to the bottom of the container. Iron 3, so iron's plus 3, hydroxide's negative 1, so we've got some crisscrossing to do here. Fe and then OH, it's the 3 after it, in a, in a solution of sodium nitrate. Sodium's plus one, nitrate's negative one, so they get to hook up on a one to one ratio. And then I just go back and balance this. One sodium, one sodium, uh, we got one hydroxide, three hydroxides. So let's change that. 
and then that affects my sodium that I thought was all set, so I put a 3 there. One iron, one iron, three nitrates, and this gets distributed, three nitrates. So three, imaginary one, imaginary one, three. We're good. Next one, mercury two. That's the charge on mercury. Oxygen's a negative two, so they end up hooking up on a one-to-one -one ratio, HGO. Decomposes to produce. That's a yield sign. It produces. It produces mercury and oxygen. Oxygen's diatomic. So one mercury, oh, let me switch to green here. One mercury, one mercury, that's good. One oxygen, two oxygens. You can't start with one and end up with two. So we put a two there, and that impacts my mercury. And then two gets distributed, two oxygens, two oxygens. So we're all set. And the zinc. Two more here. Zinc hydroxide. Zinc is a plus two. Hydroxide is negative one. So Zn and then OH2 reacts with plus sign, phosphoric acid, H3PO4 to produce, here's my yield sign, zinc phosphate. Zinc's plus two, phosphate's negative three. PO4 negative three. So it's Zn with a three and then PO4 two and water. So then I look at this whole big thing and I have to balance it. One zinc, three zincs, so I'm going to change that to a three. We've got a hydroxide over here, but we don't have a hydroxide over here, so we're going to have to split up the O's and the H's. We'll do that in a second. I got one phosphate here, two phosphates there, so let's put a two in the way, or in front of the H3PO4. Whenever you have polyatomics, try to get them out of the way first, um, or at least close to the beginning. It'll help everything else work out evenly. All right, so this craziness here. Now let's do hydrogens. We got two sets of hydrogen, or two sets of hydroxide, but it's still two hydrogens. And then we have three sets of that. So we really have OH, OH, there's one set, OH, OH, there's another set, and then there's OH and another OH. So we technically have two for one molecule and then three molecules. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Or you could do two times one and then three times two is six. Either way, you got six hydrogens over here. Over here, two times three is another six hydrogens. So that's 12. Over here, we want 12. We put a six in front. I'm sorry. Yeah, put a six in front. Then oxygens, we have the same idea. Two times one is two times three is six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six oxygens. And over here, we have no more oxygens. So we just have a grand total of six, which we have already. So a three, a two, a one, and a six. And that'll balance that one out. And finally, our last one here, we got sulfur dioxide. Great, it's a prefix, so I know it's SO2. I don't have to think about charges. Oxygen's diatomic. Combine to produce, fancy way of saying arrow, sulfur trioxide, SO3. So these guys are all covalent here. One sulfur, one sulfur, four oxygens. Over here, we have three. We have four and a three, that can't work. So let's double it and let's see what happens when we make it a six. There are six oxygens now and two sulfurs. So let's change this to two sulfurs. And then four oxygens and two oxygens. That equals six. So does two times three, six. So we're all set. So again, you've got some practice like this. You've got some handouts. I'm sure you could look around online. Your textbook's got a bunch of problems. You could get a, uh, a collection of problems to practice and take a look at.